Hi, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd do a video today talking about planting tender plants, planting seeds, okay? Not, not planting out transplants, but just seeds, sowing seeds of tender plants like cucumbers, squash, that sort of thing. Um, where I live, the temperature can, can swing dramatically this time of year. I mean, just for example, it was, it was two degrees Celsius last night. That's just two degrees above freezing, total risk of frost. Um, it'll, it's, it's about 20 right now. I think the high today is 24. Um, tonight, I think it's, we're going to have a couple nights where it's only going down to like 13 Celsius and it's going to be almost like 30 degrees Celsius during those days, which is very hot for this time of year for here. Uh, then within a couple more days, I think, so it's, it's Tuesday today, I think Thursday night it's going to be 5 Celsius and then it's going to be 7 Celsius the, the next night. All right, so it's all over the place. So you've got days where it's warm enough to plant out tender plants, but you've got these super cold nights, right? Um, so you can just wait and wait and wait and wait to plant, which is what a lot of people do. They have a rule of thumb, first new moon in June. Or you can just plant things out and cross your fingers, because just because there's a risk of frost doesn't mean there's going to be frost. <laughs> and wherever you're growing, it might just be a little bit hotter than other places. And so you make it anyway. You can, there's all kinds of rules you can bend in gardening because there's these things called microclimates, right? Where it's a little bit warmer here and a little bit colder there. And if you're in one of those warmer spots, you can get away with breaking some rules. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you what I've done here because I've got some cucumbers planted here. And I planted them uh, about a week ago. A week ago? No. Um, it's Tuesday today. I think I planted them on uh saturday morning so three days ago four days ago three days ago right so they're not they're not germinated yet nothing's germinated okay but the goal is to keep everything warm enough for everything to germinate right so i've got i'm not going to move the hole i got a whole nother dome there but th th this bed is four by ten so these uh four by eight bed or domes aren't big enough but i've got cucumbers down the middle I've got dill on one side and parsley on the other side. That's what I always do. I always grow dill, dill with my cukes because I grow pickling cucumbers and you use the dill to pickle them. Um, and a row, the length of the cucumbers <laughs> is usually enough dill to, to do it. Uh, so you got all this space over here and uh, perfect place to grow some parsley, right? Um, because you've got this big high trellis in the middle um, either side's a little bit shady, so you can't just grow anything on either side, but uh, parsley, dill will grow just fine because they're basically weeds, right? <laughs> um, anyway, so I've got them under these domes, and what I have to do, because, you know, we've got these nice warm days, um, I have to make sure this is kept, kept moist all the time. I, have to, I mean, this time, because I can't just leave the dome off, I have to be checking them all the time, so I don't think they need to be watered this morning. But after a week's gone by, they're right down the middle here, the seeds, and I plant them about three inches apart, okay? And that's assuming not all of them are going to make it, because they get taken out by slugs, or something just goes wrong, and that sort of thing, right? So I always, ideally I'm going to have cucumbers about a foot apart, but I plant them, th I sow them three inches apart to just assume, assume losses, and account for it, right? Just, just plant more than you need, so you'll have enough, right? So, when it's next, the, this coming Saturday, uh, what I'll have to do is just carefully dig with my fingers and see if I can find some seeds. I mean, because they're three inches apart, they're not hard to find, right? So I just carefully just take a little twig and just, you know, almost like an archaeologist, right? Try to find a seed and see if anything's happening. I mean, I, I can do this now, but I doubt, I doubt there's anything happening yet. I'll probably just mess everything up. So they're much easier to find once the seed's sent out a few radicals. I can't find them. That could be, no, it's not one. I can't see it. <laughs> I'm just making a heck of a mess. I plant them very shallow. They're only half an inch deep, right? You want them fairly shallow because you want the sun's heat to reach them. I can't find it. Don't know where it is. They're, they're, they're in there. <laughs> but I can't find them at all. <laughs> That's funny. Um, anyway, they're in there somewhere. 
So I'll wait, you know, I'll wait till this Saturday because that'll be a week from when they've been planted and do what I just did there. Just very carefully look around, see if I can find some sign of a germinated seed. Okay. And then uh, if I see that, then I know they're not dead. If I can't find any germinated seeds anywhere, at that point, I assume that it got too cold one night, despite these domes, and then I have to replant them all, right? But after a week, with the kind of temperatures we're having during the day, and see I got this nice dark soil, so this is like my, my, my wife has a bunch of, um, you know, potted plants around the, the front of the house and on her deck that she likes, you know, flowers and stuff. So every year, uh, you know, this time of year, I just take all the old soil from the previous year and I use that to plant my seedlings because that soil is always darker than my natural soil, right? So I know it's going to attract heat, right? So the idea with these domes is that, of course, they make it nice and nice and warm in there so the plants can sort of be at their optimal germination temperature during the day. But what they're also doing is helping to charge up the soil with enough heat so that overnight when it gets really cold, the soil remains warmer than the air, right? So last night it was like two degrees Celsius, but I imagine the soil was probably five or six or seven or eight degrees, right? It should be warm enough that the seed doesn't die, right? When you, when you have a seed that's frost, you know, like a tender from tender plants like cucumbers, if the seed is wet and it's cold, it, it can die, right? There's always the risk, right? So that's what I've done here, okay? And hopefully in about a week, I'll see something happening <laughs> and they're not all dead and gone, right? You just never know with these things. This dome looks pretty tightly sealed, but you can see it's got a hole in the top from, a, from damage. But also it's not perfectly, um, like you can see here, see if there's a space there, right? So the air can get in and out. I've got these wood chips and they're a bit higher than the profile of the soil. So when I have the domes down, it allows the, uh, the air that's inside to escape. All right, so there's a degree of airflow, and that way it doesn't get too hot. But that being said, tomorrow it's supposed to get to 30 Celsius. So I'll probably take these off in the morning and leave them off all day. Right? Any day where it's going to be like, days like today where it's about 20, I leave them on. I give them a good watering in the morning and leave them on. And days like, I think tomorrow where it's 30 they got to come off, <laughs> right? Because they just cook everything in there. All right, so it's a bit of work and it's a bit of tinkering around. But, you know, it's a relatively short amount of time you're doing all of that for. And it just allows you to get things started a little bit earlier, bend the rules a little bit, and not have to worry so much about the frost. Right, I've done that in some beds. I do these things not wholesale, right? So... I always plant cucumbers, I always plant squash um, this way, using the same technique kind of thing. I, I don't plant the squash so close together because um, I don't grow them up a trellis. Um, I haven't planted the squash yet. Right? I, don't do, I do always do everything a little bit here and a little bit there. That way it's not overwhelming. That way I can have a garden of this size, right? And uh, manage it. <laughs> it looks like a well-maintained garden, right? And I've got... I mean, using if, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out my uh, one of my dandelion planting schedule videos or the article I wrote, maritimegardening.substack.com, free. You don't have to don't have to be a paid subscriber to read it. Um, called uh, I think it's called a dandy planting schedule, um, where you plant some things when you see dandelion green, some things when you see the yellow flowers, and some things when the dandelions turn white. Uh, so I've got like 80% of my garden in. Uh, all I have left to plant is squash and the transplants I have in size tomato eggplant and uh, peppers everything else is in <laughs> and everything else is growing everything else is tiny right everything beets and you know Swiss chard and all that sort of stuff it's all little but it's all growing right because some things can take frost and some things can't take frost but for tenders like these um, when you're planting when it's these sort of iffy days where you got warm days but cold nights um, now, I mean, mind you, if you look at any calendar, it'll say that it's past the last frost date for where I am, 
but it isn't because we just had frost last night <laughs> right <laughs> two degrees celsius <laughs> i should have came out earlier i was busy in the house this morning i should have captured the frost but there, I, I, I almost guarantee everything was covered in frost because it was two celsius right anyway just a little video on bending the rules planting things early and uh you know planting cucumbers right half an inch deep with um, some nice soil on top uh, and for those i mean people have been sending me messages about the fires in nova scotia um so far they haven't reached where i am we're okay i can actually this morning i can smell um last night i couldn't smell them but today i can there's kind of like this it's a weird smell it's not like campfire it's different because so many things are burning right i mean everything's burning and i can't remember i think a couple hundred people have lost their homes um so it's uh it's a bit nerve-wracking i've always been nervous living against a forest like this um because there's so many um there's so many idiots that just light fires because they don't seem to understand wind and physics and temperature and dryness and that sort of thing. I mean, it's been really dry here. We haven't had rain for like six weeks. It's just unbelievable. Normally in this time of year, we get a lot of rain, right? We get, uh, I have a saying, uh, April showers bring May showers. <laughs> Normally April and May are rainy and we've only had a couple rains, just nothing, right? I've been hand watering my garden. I normally don't water at all. Um, so yeah, it's been very, very dry. The forests are bone dry and you got these idiots uh, burning their lawn because they don't want to rake their lawn or flicking cigarettes out of their cars or that sort of thing. Just down the road here, a kilometer away, some teenagers lit a fire in the woods. Um, I don't mean, a, I mean, they lit the fire, <laughs> they lit the woods on fires. I understand it, but they got it out, right? That was just uh, a week ago, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of dumb stuff like that or people camping and they say well you know i always light fires this time of year nothing's ever happened well you know i mean you've got you know i know people don't trust government officials you know when they say don't light a fire they mean don't light a fire <laughs> because the whole thing's just waiting to burn right the whole thing is going to burn up <laughs> it's all dry it's all just waiting to burn and you know our forests they're all these uh, spruce trees evergreens I mean, evergreens burn so, the, the, I mean, most trees, the leaves, if you took the leaves from a birch tree, took a pile of leaves from a birch tree and threw them on a fire, they'd put the fire out. You take all the needles from a spruce tree and throw them on a fire, you're turning that fire into like fireworks, right? Because the, the resin in those needles, there's water in the needles, but there's resin. And so once, the, once it reaches a certain temperature, it just bursts into flame, right? So it's just... Uh, it's just crazy. So it's, it's always nerve-wracking living out here. Whenever I smell fire, I, I wonder if it's just some person, you know, having a campfire in their backyard or if the forest is on fire and I'm going to lose my house. And if this forest catches on fire, it's all gone. I mean, especially my house. I mean, the whole, all the houses here, they got vinyl siding. I mean, they, they just disappear, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, I just try not to think about it. <laughs> you know, idle hands do the devil's work. So I just, I just find something to do and focus on doing something and uh, try to be so busy during the day that I'm just tired at night and I can sleep properly um, because there's nothing you can do, right? I mean, this is just, there's no rain in sight for the next week. The, uh, you know, the, the various firefighting uh, organizations, they're doing everything they can to contain it. Um, and we got hotter, drier days ahead. And there's just, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. You know, either it's going to burn your house down or it's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, I mean, I'm laughing, not funny. I'm just laughing because it's, it's, that's so much of life is like that, right? When you drive to work, either you're going to die in a horrible car accident or you'll be fine. <laughs> you know, you just, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. No one worries about dying in a car accident. But it's like the most, the biggest risk anyone takes every day, if you look at the stats, is driving to work, right? Um, no one worries about it. It's a normal thing, right? That's a level of risk we're accustomed to. Uh, and we worry about so many other things that are unlikely. Um, so I just think, well, it's just like driving to work. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get T-boned by a tractor trailer or I'm going to have a perfectly great day. <laughs> <laughs> and getting t-boned t-boned is unlikely but you know there's just uh yeah there's nothing you can do right hopefully the wind doesn't turn this way hopefully i get lucky in some way 
and uh, you know you just never know uh, anyway enough rambling about that uh, I hope you found this video interesting if you did please like share subscribe and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching hey if you want to help support everything I'm doing here go to vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year and use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order check out the description box of this video for details you can buy everything you need from Vessies. they have seeds fruit bushes and trees soil amendments pest solutions tools clothing and lots of other stuff too so yeah if you want to help support everything i'm doing here and they sell something you need buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening